question coming in from our attendee, but they're asking what about the publicly traded companies? In what ways might the new rule impact the design and structure of executive compensation packages? And uh, uh, maybe Steve, if you want to start with that, Stephen, and then we'll move to Terry. The biggest impact is it may get people away from the basic principle that everybody's entitled to median market pay regardless of past performance and really get people to rethink the whole concept of competitive pay and focus again on sharing issues. Yeah. You know, the only thing I would add um, there is that <clears throat> the, the new rules ex highlight companies where there might be bad pay practices. And so companies that might have been using incentive measures um, that could be argued to be softballs are being forced to add more rigor um, and using performance goals with a little bit more robustness to them. Um, you know, so I have already seen a trend to more companies picking um, using more relative total shareholder return as a defined performance measure or a little bit more weight on relative total shareholder return to make sure that it aligns um, in a stronger way. So that's the one thing that I've seen is it, you know, and, and hopefully we will evolve to much better pay practices, like something Steve's alluded to, these perfect pay plans. But in, in you know, the small incremental baby steps that I've already seen is, is a shift towards more re relative total shareholder return. Thank you. Another, and what other is I would hope that this will lead to consciousness raising on the part of our proxy advisors and institutional investors and just get them to think about executive pay in a more sophisticated way than they've been doing in the past. 